In this video, we're going to get the party started by painting some fireworks and some champagne to welcome in the new year, all done with acrylic paint. So what are you waiting for? Let's get celebrating. Hello, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl, Amanda, the buzzed artist. Welcome back to my channel. I don't know what I'm doing with my fingers. <laughs> We're gonna be painting this really fun New Year's Eve slash like New Year slash fireworks party scene. So what I'm using here is a nine by 12 canvas paper, but you can use any size canvas or any size medium or paper that you have. Because I'm using paper, I went ahead and taped it down to my work surface. In addition to those, you're gonna need three brushes. You're going to need a three quarter inch flat wash brush. Uh, you're gonna need a number eight round brush, and you're going to need a number zero round detail round brush. And then just for colors, these are the colors that I'm going to be using, but of course you can swap and do any kind of colors you like. I'm going to be using titanium white, ultramarine blue, Mars black, lime green, dioxazine purple, as well as some raw sienna. Totally optional. I also have here some gold because I'm kind of like on a gold kick lately. <laughs> it's such a fun color. I just so happen to have the metallic gold paint from Arteza. I decided, hey, why not? So if you happen to have some metallic paint lying around, you know, you can go ahead and use this for this painting as well. And in addition to that, you're just gonna have a cup of water nearby as well as a little towel to help clean up your brushes. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna work on doing the background and we're gonna grab the three quarter inch flat wash brush. We're gonna dip it in our water, get it nice and wet. And then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna grab our black and our purple. So it's gonna make this like really, really deep, deep, deep purple color. And then once you have your brush nicely loaded, you're going to go to your canvas and you're basically just going to cover the entire area of your painting with this color. Yeah, I know, pretty simple, right? <laughs> I know, it's, you know, I always feel like when it comes to painting, you know, you, you, you think like, oh my gosh, there's all of these like random like strokes that are just so complicated. Nah, bruh. It's all about building and layering and just kind of working your way there. It's not its not magic, really. It's really not even rocket science. It's just learning how to build one layer at a time. So I'm just gonna keep on adding and I'm dipping my brush back into the water as I'm doing this. So as we're preparing for the, the new year, because this is when I'm gonna have this video uploaded, you know, I, I start to think about like what my resolutions are and I definitely have been focusing a lot more on mental health lately. I think being a new mom, you know, you kind of, you're introduced to a lot of stress <laughs> and I think this is something that you, you all would find relevant too in your lives. You know, we, we come up with daily stressors whether it be from our work or our family, our kids, whatever. But, you know, if we're not if we're not right in our minds, we're really not going to be performing the best and being our best. And so I I think one of my resolutions for sure is to be is to be a lot more insightful and to approach approach my everyday life with kindness and gentleness. That's something that, you know, we've talked about on this channel before is being kind to yourself, especially when you're making art, but that's so important. And I think it's a, it's a lesson that we all need to, to practice in our daily lives. So that's definitely one of my new year's resolutions. What's your resolution for this coming year? We're watching this in the year 2020 and we're hopping into 2021. I'm hoping that it's gonna be way better than it was <laughs> in this past year. But I mean, if you're watching, you know, right now or in the future and then, you know, the other years to come, what are your New Year's resolutions? What do you got going on? Okay, so now that I've covered my entire canvas with this color, I'm just gonna give my brush a nice rinse. And uh, we're done with the flat wash. So I'm gonna put him down. So my canvas is still just a tad 
wet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give it like another minute or two to dry. Then once that's dry, we're going to go in and start putting in our fireworks. Okay, so my background has dried up quite a bit. So we're going to move on to the next step, which is the fireworks. So much fun. Baby, you're a firework. Uh -uh. <laughs> we're going to stop singing now, Amanda. Okay, so what we're going to do is grab our detail brush now because we're going to start to make those, those sparks that come out of the fire, uh, the firework. So we're just going to take our brush, dip it in some water. What we're going to start with first is we're going to pick the base color of the firework. If you kind of think about the firework, there's always like a, a color of a firework. It's never just like that, that yellow color. It's sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's purple. And this is where you can really have fun with this painting. You can choose whatever colors. So the colors that I chose to do the fireworks in are that blue, the green, the raw sienna, and the purple. But if you want to swap out some colors, let's say you wanted to put in like a red or a pink firework, by all means, go for it. But this is, these are just the colors that I chose. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start with the, uh, the more purpley looking fireworks. So I'm going to grab some purple. And then I'm going to take my white and combine them together. Now, because this is going to be on a black background, it's going to have this kind of like neon kind of look uh, when these are kind of paired together. And I think that's going to look really, really cool. So it's kind of, it kind of worked with the, um, the Cheshire Cat painting. It's kind of going to be that same look. So just keep that in mind. So I got a nice purple going here. Now we're gonna move to our back to our canvas. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the first firework like right around here and I want it to be pretty big. So um, I'm gonna space in, let's see, let's do about um, four inches from the left of the canvas and about four inches down from the top portion of the canvas to the left. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a dot right there just to show you that's kind of where I'm gonna start. And so, to make a firework, it's just a series of lines. I almost think of them like pom-poms. And the line, they're all different like lengths. So to start, I'm gonna take my brush, and I, ha I have my, my, my palm on the canvas as like a little leverage. I'm gonna take my brush and kind of make an arc. Just like that. Okay, and as I get to the end, of that firework, I release pressure. So it kind of it kind of forms a little tip. And then I just keep on going and I repeat. But this time I'm just going to, I'm gonna vary the length. So I'm gonna do one going on top like that, and up like this. So basically you're gonna follow along this, the center point that you made at first. And then you're just gonna kind of form like, kind of like a little circle. And you're gonna vary the lines, very important. Also, you wanna make sure your brush starts in the center and moves out like that. Okay. So I just go in with a series of lines. I'm making sure my brush is nice and wet as I'm doing this to help keep my brush strokes nice and tight. Okay. I always work in and out. And then usually I like to make the bottom stroke just a little bit longer, just like that. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just a little bit, just to kind of show like that big sparkler right there. And if you want to, you can go to one of the ends of like your shorter pieces and just kind of like make a little trail, like a little dotted line. Okay. Again, this just, just it's just to show like, you know, like the, the sparks, like all this, all the fun stuff that's coming out of it. Just like so. You don't really have to go that crazy with it. But I like that. I think that's good. So now that we have that part, we're gonna give our brush a nice little rinse. And then we're gonna move on to another color and do the same exact thing. So what I'm thinking we can do is, maybe we can do a blue one right in this corner. 
So I'm going to grab my blue, mix it in with some white. It's going to make like a really nice blue color, I think. Like a nice light blue. Okay. Brush is nice and uh, loaded. So now we're going to go here and do the same exact thing. And you know what? I think I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. So I'm going to probably start right around here. So maybe like two and a half inches to the uh, top right and top. So I'm just going to, once again, repeat those strokes. And I'm making sure to just like keep my brush nicely lubricated as I'm doing that. And I am totally not afraid of going into the other, the other firework burst that we've done. Not afraid to do that because like in real life, things overlap. So you gotta, you gotta go roll with it. You know what I mean? Just like so. So, got that one. Let's do another one. Let's do another one like right around here. I think that'd be really cool. So, I rinse my detail brush. I'm gonna go with my raw sienna. Grab some white. You guys know the drill at this point. All right, we're gonna go at it. So we're gonna go around like, I think I'm gonna go like right around here. I think that'll be nice. And then, just repeat the strokes. Once more. And you'll notice the way I'm holding my brush, I kind of vary it sometimes. Like if I'm starting out, I kind of go really close to do the first stroke. And then I kind of, uh, to take give myself less control, I hold my brush like out to here. And that helps like, that helps to relieve pressure off my brush and also kind of give it a more uh, dry brush technique, which I think when it comes to fireworks is a really nice look. So why not? Again, I'm just gonna go blend. I'm just gonna go like interfere with the previous firework on top. Let's do another one. I'm having fun with this. So we're just gonna do straight up, uh, straight up white this time with our detail brush. And this one's gonna be a little smaller. It's just gonna be right there. Just a little bloop, just a little burst. Just like that. Again, I'm just always emanating from the center point. All right, now we're just going to do another little layer on top of our fireworks. So with my with my detail brush rinsed out, I'm gonna go back to, to, the, to this firework right here, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of green to my brush. Now, because this is a pale green, it's like a lime green, it's already kind of bright. I really don't have to add that much white to it really. If not at all. Yeah, see, I can just go right on top and it'll look pretty nice. So I'm just going to repeat some strokes. Again, just to add a bit more depth to that color. Now we're going to go to these guys here. Now I'm just gonna go in with white this time, just straight up white, because I wanna just um, just add like a little bit of an embellishment on top, but I'm literally just gonna repeat the same strokes, emanating from the same center as the previous strokes. 
And honestly, if some like other colors get onto the other fireworks, that's totally okay. In fact, it's encouraged. Um, I don't know. It just adds. It just adds more colors, uh, more believability. Like just, just like more to the craziness, which I think is pretty. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little bit on this firework as well. You can really, we can really feel the festive nature of this. I'm feeling it. <laughs> this is like the McDonald's commercial, like, I'm loving it. Except, it's all about the feels, baby. Once your your fireworks are pretty much nice and dry, we're gonna move on to putting in the glasses. So, so I'm just tapping it. Yeah, it, it's it could use another minute or two to dry. So we're just gonna wait for that to go and dry up, and then we're gonna do the glasses. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our detail brush, which is now nicely rinsed, and we're gonna dip it in some white. Okay, so you're gonna basically just follow my lead. Um, I will include a stencil for the, the cups. So if you wanna go ahead and use a stencil instead of following along with me, that's okay. So we're gonna have two champagne glasses and we're gonna just position them, like one's here and one's over here. So we're gonna start with the first glass and I'm gonna start it like right around this area here. And don't worry, with all the fireworks in the background, we're going to be adding some um, paint on top to make sure that the focus is on the wine, the um, champagne glasses as well. So I'm just going to start like right around here, and I'm just going to make a curved line I like that. The curved line's about, I'd say like an inch and a half. So once you have that, then you're going to do two other curved lines vertically coming down. So one's gonna come down like this. And I wanna keep it relatively thin, but that's if it's not thin right away, don't worry. Okay. Now we follow suit with the line next to it. Just like that. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna do the, the stem of the glass, so the stem pretty much starts right at this point. Okay, it kind of like uh, comes out like this and it goes down pretty much straight. Straight and thin, straight and thin, just like that. Okay, and then it'll swoop out, swoop out, and you connect, okay? So it looks like a little triangle at the very bottom. That's how you do a champagne glass. Not too bad. So now that we've kind of got the shape of the glass, we're just gonna give our brush a rinse. We're gonna put it down for a second. We're gonna grab our round brush because we're gonna paint in what would appear to be the, the champagne itself inside. So we're gonna dip the round brush in water and we're gonna grab the raw sienna. Okay, maybe just a tad bit of white, just a tad. The champagne is about like three quarters of the way filled, so I'm just gonna make a line on the very top, just like that, to show that's where the line, that's where the uh, glass of uh, liquid ends. <laughs> and then we're gonna do a line kind of going on the, the side of the glass, like like that. And then we're gonna do another one right here, both on the inside. And I'm just gonna slightly cover the uh, the white of the champagne that we just lay down just a slight bit okay and then we're going to fill in the stem part as well as well as the the left side of that triangle of the foot of the champagne glass okay now that you've done that we're going to 
We're going to dab the brush on the towel so it's nice and dry at this point. And we're going to go back in and dip in water again. We're going to do like a pulling technique where it pulls the paint out. So it, it kind of sh it forms this transparent layer. So we're going to go to the edges where we laid our raw sienna. And then using that water that's on the brush, we tap it and kind of pull it towards the center. And I'm not covering the entire in interior of the champagne glass, just a little bit. Um, just to pull the color in, but you still want to kind of see what's going on in the background, like that. Honestly, I wouldn't think too, too much about this part. It's just to kind of pull the color in so it's not overwhelming, but it still looks like it's liquid and that it's see-through. Okay. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna tap our brush on the towel. And then we're gonna put that brush down, go back to our detail brush. And we're gonna pull up our white again. And I'm just gonna grab the tiniest bit of raw sienna. Like I want it to be mostly white with just a little bit of raw sienna in it. Okay, so we're gonna start to add in like little details in the glass. So um, we're gonna make the reflection of the, of the glass. So we're gonna start at the top portion of the the glass here. Just make a, a shorter curved line coming down like that. And it come, kind of comes down about halfway through the glass. I'm just going to add a bit more white to it. Okay, you see that? And then we're going to add a few more reflection points. Very thin lines, very small amount of pressure. We don't need that much. And then at the bottom where the neck of the glass meets the bottom of the glass. There's going to be a reflection point of the of the glass. <laughs> I keep saying the glass, but it's going to show up like this, like a, an upside down curved line. Just like that, or an upside down U that's kind of flattened out. And then you're going to do the opposite of that on the top here, where the lip of the glass is. And it's gonna have a U-shape, but it's flat. Just like so. Okay. And then I'm just gonna embellish just a little bit with the white um, on some portions of the glass. So I'm gonna add a bit more white to the leftmost portion of the neck. So like of the stem, just gonna add a little bit more white going down as well as to the the foot on the right and then I'm gonna add some more to this is very light by the way very light pressure I'm gonna add some more to the sides of the glass here I'm not I'm really not using that much paint honestly very very little pressure Okay, and then I'm just going to do a nice line across the top of the liquid. Just like so. Okay, this doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be like absolute perfection. Honestly, like you can see that this is a glass and it's filled. It's got some liquid in it, <laughs> you know, so we're going to, we can always go back to it, add a little bit more as we go. But I think for now, pretty happy with it. I'm liking what I see. So what we do now is we repeat. We take exactly what we did here and we repeat it on this side. So once again, just a refresh. I'm going to give myself about half an inch between the um, the two glasses. So uh, we're going to start the the rim about like half an inch to the right, and it comes down with a curved line. Comes down. Another curved line. Just like so. Then we're going to form the neck. 
which comes down in a straight line like that. Down, foot, triangle. And I'm continuously dipping my brush in water just to help with this. Okay. So once you kind of got your shape down is when you can start to, again, add in the liquid. Um, and you know, if you felt like your bot, like your, your um, glass is not quite as, you know, the same, like the same thickness or whatever, just keep adding to it. And then you can always kind of re-race it with your raw sienna when you put in the liquid. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I got my round brush. I'm gonna grab my raw sienna, little bit of white, just a tad. And then we're gonna add the liquid in, about the same, same length. Then we're gonna go to the side and the side. And then the, and then to the left, as well as the neck. Okay? This is pretty repetitive. Okay. And then rinse my brush, just tap it with just water this time. And then we're gonna pull the color in. Not all of it, but just the just majority of it's gonna get pulled inside. It, again, it just forms this look that of transparency. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're gonna go back to our detail brush and add in the glass details. So mostly white, just a hint of raw sienna. Got the bottom reflection of the glass under here. The lip of the glass on the top, got the top of the liquid. If it seems I'm doing this out of order, you know, honestly, you don't have to do the same order as I'm doing. These are just things you're adding as you go, as it makes sense to you. And you know, as you're going and you wanna kinda add a bit more to the other glass, by all means, do it. Baby, you don't need my permission. Do what feels right to you. And if you're like, Amanda, I'm just starting. I have no idea what I'm doing. Then breathe. It's okay to make a mistake. It's just acrylic. <laughs> this is how you learn. Okay, so we're gonna do the reflection point on the glass represented by that curved line. And then it's going to do another couple of curved white lines towards the bottom. Just like that. I'm just gonna go back in with the white, add a bit more. A little more to the sides. Then I can go back in with the raw sienna. I, I always do this. I always like to go back and forth, just as you're going and building, because you start to see what makes sense, what kind of works. So I'm kind of adding a little bit of that raw sienna back to the sides of the glass. Again, uh, when it comes to glass, it, it is a very highly reflective surface. So like the more like random areas, like areas where you don't think that color would show up, it's gonna show up. Okay. 
And if I find it, I will include the, the uh, reference of the glasses that I'm using because I find that um, when you have something to look at and compare as you go, you'll it'll make a lot more sense, you know, instead of just following my perception of what's going on. Okay. more white to the stem. And another thing too is I'm gonna go I can go back in with the black and the, the purple, like that same background color we were using. If of course I want to just you know if I feel like I'm added too much on the side. You know, I added too much of uh, a certain color or white or whatever. I can go back in and clean that up. And I can add like a dash of black right there just to, again, just to, just to show the background a bit more. You know, I don't have to add it completely everywhere, just like in certain sections. Right there. Right here too. So you can see where you can get a little creative with this. You don't need too much, just a little can really go a long way. It's on the bottom too. It's coming together. We can see, we can feel the festivities. <laughs> We're gonna go in with our with our um, round brush for some final detail work. So we're just gonna dip it in some white. And we're just gonna do a couple of like streamers. So I'm literally just gonna take the, the tip of my brush. I'm gonna start like right around here, I think. And I'm just gonna make a couple of squiggly lines. And then I'd probably do another another set like right here. Kind of like behind. And maybe another one right here. Yeah, honestly, you don't have to do too much. Just do a little bit. Or you don't have to do them at all, honestly. Totally up to you. You also have the option too to use the same brush kind of do some some final strokes for your fireworks especially if you just want to add a couple more like little little sparks that come out towards the back there. And this is where the gold can come in. So I'm just gonna grab that gold because I, again, I just wanna add like little bits of flair to this. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to the inside portions of the of the glasses. Not not much, just like, just a little bit. I just wanna get that shimmer going. So I'm just adding a little bit to the right, the left portions of the glass as well as to the necks and the bottoms here. And then I'm going to add some to this particular firework here. Again, we're just repeating the same strokes like we did before. And then just a couple of accent strokes here, just to help tie everything together. Man, look at those colors go, huh? I love adding gold. <laughs> There's just something so pretty with add, when you add gold to something, like just, boop, just a little pop, man, just a little pop. All right, and then you pretty much have the basis for your painting. You can just keep on adding 
more fireworks or what have you as you see fit. And just for kicks, I'm just going to add a bit more gold embellishments on the little streamers as well. Also, I just wanted to add too, if you want to add like little specks to the champagne glass itself of the other colors that you see here, like for example, I'm going to grab some of that purple, that light purple, and I'm just going to do like little, just little bits that are reflecting on the glass. I think that's a really nice way to tie, yet again, more things together. So I just kind of uh, find various ways to tie in different colors into the glass itself. And we do the same thing with the blue. Just different, different areas. It doesn't have to be like completely everywhere, just, just little bits. And just for more added contrast, I'm adding a, the same purple and black um, background color to the outline of the glasses because you will notice that they kind of like, they kind of lose a little focus with all the fireworks going on in the back. So just adding like a very thin highlight using your detail brush around each glass actually helps them make it stand apart little bit. Plus, y'all know me, I <laughs> I do adore doing outlines. Again, they just, they add a little bit of a flair to, to whatever it is that you're working on, and uh, I don't know, it's just fun. And I'm, I'm also going to include some of that black on the inside of the glass as well. Again, it brings a little bit of contrast to the scene. Okay, and that's how you can go about making your very own New Year's Eve slash fireworks acrylic painting from scratch. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, you know what to do so that you can see more paintings like this from me to you in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this little painting and most importantly, I hope you learned the value of just learning to let go, have fun, and just roll with the process. So I hope you all have a wonderful new year filled with lots of hope, lots of love and generosity in spirit. And of course, lots of art. I will see you all next time. Bye.